The lantern bearers were created to counter rebels and general heretical activity that would otherwise bring shadows and darkness to the Emperor's light. They were founded during the 26th founding, due in part to a reading of the Emperor's Tarot, which stated roughly that a chapter would be needed to bring light to the darkness. Their progenitor chapter is the Dark Angels, and have actively tried to breed up perceived flaws with the progenitor's gene seed. This, of course, introduced some divergence. Chapters like this often go on to define their own traditions and write their own histories, looking forward to the future more than back to the past. Their modus operandi used to be see but don't be seen, however they've since had to wholly abandon this methodology. Instead they've now had to bolster their relations with Mars, resulting in them fielding a larger contingent of tech marines. This also marked them as signs of Mars by some, and the Mars cult regards them as strange but effective. This can also be seen as penance for the chapter's unfortunate loss of their first forge world. The chapter has since dedicated more plants and moons to the Omnissiah. During the chapter's breeding out of deficiencies of their gene seed, a slight defect occurred that resulted in a hypersensitive oculobe, which results in a mutation of bioluminescence of the eyes. The chapter is noted as being extremely prideful in their colours, to the point that it's noted as a chapter flaw. While all chapters take great pride in their heraldry, some take this pride to such an extreme that they regard anything that hides them as a form of cowardice. They wear their colours proudly and make use of back banners to better announce their presence on the field of battle. The Battle Brothers of the Lantern Bearers balk at the Death Watcher's tradition of painting over the armour of recruits when the Apocryphon Oath is taken. Some of the Lantern Bearers who have joined the Death Watch have even refused to do so, serving only a short time within the Death Watch before returning to their chapter in bitterness. Others have, in time, overcome their hubris and earned a place in the annuals of the Long Vigil. The chapter venerates the Emperor, its progenitor's Primarch, and its own heroes, according to its own traditions. Some of these are wildly at odds with the tenets of the Imperial Creed. This particular chapter has developed ritual practices so extreme or exotic that even fellow space marines balk at the sight of them. Such practices range from grisly sangui rites to dark victory celebrations. A battle brother serving in the Death Watch may have to conceal the worst excesses of his chapter's cult, even from the closest members of its kill team, and practice them in seclusion lest he gravely offend or disgust people. The Lanterns participate in ritualistic song and dance and practices on the eve of every battle. These events are similar to the Space Wolves feasting before battle, however while food and drink is around, it is not the centre of attention. The music played is drastically different from what most would expect. The chants and notes are extremely harsh and the music itself carries a very unusual set of tones. So intense is the ritual that marines are known to hallucinate and receive visions. The ritual continues until one marine receives a vision of the Emperor and his great battles. Ritualistic fights during the event are also known to break out frequently. In battle, marines are known to start singing, firing in a particular rhythm, or acting out to the music that was played without them realising it. Therefore, the songs played are carefully considered and planned out depending on what the battle is to come. The collecting of skulls and spinal cords is also rampant within the chapter. These skulls of the enemy are polished, cleaned, and converted for use as speakers and vox units. <laughs>